What's up, live? How's everybody doing? Check in, check in. Going to wait a couple of seconds here and let my uh, notifications get sent out. Um, you know, we back in the fish room. I've been liking these fish room vibes here lately. And while we're waiting for people uh, to check in, let me grab something real quick. When you check in, go and comment where you're watching this from. And as always, you know, uh, any questions about what we're about to talk about, put it in the live chat. But give me two seconds. Let me grab something and then let's start this video real quick. All right, all right. So, got a couple people here, as always. Appreciate you guys checking in. And what I want to talk about to you in this video are 10 things that we learn in school that prevent you from becoming a successful entrepreneur. Again, I want you guys to understand that uh, the, the reason why I put that title like that is because it's not just you all. I learned it too. So 10 things that we've learned in school that make us unsuccessful entrepreneurs or make us struggle as entrepreneurs when we first get started, right? I have the list right here. I'm going to move it closer because uh, you guys probably can't see it anyway, but I'll just share it here and then I'll show you guys the entire list at the end. And all right, we got 13 people here, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Appreciate all 13 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this from, and put any questions you may have in the chat. So the first thing that I want to cover is that we learned that it's wrong to make mistakes or you're afraid to make mistakes. Uh, me and Mike get messages all the time about um, people wanting more information. Like we'll make a video and say, this is how you do this to make money. And then people will say, okay, will you tell us more? And then we'll be like, that, that's pretty much it. It's, it's simple. But I think what it is, is that people are so used to having a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure where when you tell them, hey, if you want to make money tax-free in real estate, go to your local office, your local city office, or go on the website, look for an opportunity zone, find out who the owner is, buy it, renovate it, sell it. It's that simple. But people are so afraid to make mistakes. As an entrepreneur or just as a person in life, you're going to make mistakes. There's no way around it. We all make mistakes. But being afraid to make mistakes will not only... Uh, delay you as an entrepreneur, but you'll also miss out on a lot of entrepreneur uh, on a lot of entrepreneurial opportunities. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. You got to take risks in order to be a successful entrepreneur. So the first thing that we all learn is don't make mistakes. If you make mistakes, you're gonna get the problem wrong. You'll fail the test. You'll fail the grade. Something like that. But in entrepreneurship, you got to make mistakes because you got to take this big risks to grow your brand, to grow your business, things like that. Second thing, I worded it like this intentionally. Keep your eyes on your own paper, right? Of course, we all had teachers that said that before a test or before any assignment. Keep your eyes on your own paper. If you cheat, you may uh, fail the test, you may get sent to the office. Uh, it, it could be on a bigger assignment where uh, they say don't copyright anything um, or you'll fail it or get kicked out. Or even if you do source it properly, you can't source all the information or will mark it wrong and you'll fail, you know, all of that stuff. Keep your eyes on your own paper, right? Let me tell you why that's not good advice for most entrepreneurs, right? I needed to make a website for one of my private label businesses. Do you think that I went out and invented the way to make a website? No, I went and I copied exactly step by step what somebody else had already did to make a website. And you know what? I didn't have to give them credit Oh, I gave credit to so-and-so for teaching me how to make a website. In entrepreneurship, it doesn't matter. And in real life, lots of times it doesn't matter either. It, like If you guys take information from my channel, my channel, whoever you watch on YouTube, and go make money off of it, there is no crime saying, oh, you learned that from JT. You got you to gotta give credit to JT or give some money to JT for that, right? So there's a lot of information out there that people have came before you and went ahead and done it and been very successful. So a lot of people get into this mentality that they got from school that as a new entrepreneur, I got to figure everything out myself. 
I don't want to be uh, looking like somebody else. I don't want somebody to say you marketing like Mike Snead, you marketing like JT, your website look like so-and-so website, right? If it works, use it, okay? You don't have to go out and reinvent the wheel. You're going to spend a lot of time and waste a lot of money trying to do stuff differently when there's already a proven strategy. Just do it, right? Same thing with marketing. I tried a lot of different stuff uh, when it came to marketing. And then once I found out, okay, what works for me, I use it. But it's common that what works for me works for everybody. It just works, right? Like influencer marketing. Influencer marketing works for every business, regardless of what business you have. You don't have to go invent a new way to get customers to your business. You can start influencer marketing, right? Things like that. And influencer marketing has been around ever since they invented television, even before that. But early on in television, when it was black and white and you saw John Wayne promoting cigarettes all the way up through now, they're still using influencers to market product or services because it works. You don't have to have tunnel vision and say, I got to do everything myself. I don't want to see what my competitors are doing or what anybody else is doing uh, to get traffic to their website. Learn. Learn. You're going. To, you're, the only thing you're going to do is waste a lot of time and a lot of money trying to reinvent a wheel that already exists. You can just implement it, start making money, and you can develop some uniqueness about your brand, about your company. But you don't have to do everything yourself. You don't have to figure everything out. Third thing I have on this list: in school, we are taught that a diploma, a degree or a certification, or we could throw in a, a special license as well, equals big money, right? Now, in some cases, depending on what you get, this is true. For the vast majority of people, you'll get a high school diploma, you're not going to make big money. You'll get a, a four-year bachelor's degree, you still might not make big money, but you can make a living for yourself. Um, even people I know with a master's, right? They're not making big money. It's people that they work with that have bachelor's degrees, it's people that they work with that have no degree at all, and they all making around the same amount of money, right? So while it is true in certain situations, the vast majority of people, just because you graduate high school, graduate college, or get a special certification or license, you're not going to make big money. That in and of itself, <clears throat> excuse me, that in and of itself is not enough. That might get you in the conversation, get you the interview or things like that, but you got to really have results. Results get you big money, right? You got to actually deliver. You can't just show up and say, hey, I have this piece of paper, so pay me $250,000 a year uh, when you don't have any results, any experience. Uh, you haven't proven yourself in the market, especially as an entrepreneur, right? Because there's so many new businesses popping up every single day that you have to differentiate yourself from everybody else. Because it's a good chance that you're not the only person selling T-shirts, selling fish, making courses, writing books, whatever it is you're deciding to do on the Internet. So don't think that a piece of paper will magically make you worth trillions. Right. But in the traditional school system, they tell you that that you're going to make a ton of money uh, at the high school. Go to college. Once you win college, they'll say everybody got a bachelor's degree. You got to get at least a master's, right? And then on and on. And then somebody like me that spent seven years after high school and getting an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's, and then finally transitioning uh, first into corporate America and then it's entrepreneurship, finding out that if your goal is to make a lot of money, you don't need none of that, right? You just wasted a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, next thing, reading. This is so important. I'm really thinking about actually doing a YouTube video on how to read because I think most people don't even understand how valuable a skill it is to actually be able to read. A lot of people know how to read. They take it for granted, meaning that they don't read that often. You'll read maybe stuff on Facebook, uh, maybe the caption on Instagram, maybe your bill. So you know how much you got to pay to keep your lights on, but you don't just pick up books and read them just to read them to gain knowledge, right? But I think that's because, again, in the formal education structure, reading for most people is forced on them, and then they view reading as being boring, 
cumbersome work, things like that. So once you're out of that system, you don't want to read again. You'll say, hey, man, why would I read a book? I could go watch TV or I can listen to music. Um, but there's a lot of value in reading. What you get out of reading is that not only will it increase your vocabulary, it'll also increase uh, your knowledge on something and it'll increase your ability to retain knowledge because in a book, unlike a song or unlike on TV where you could just press rewind and listen to it again or see it again, you actually, if you miss something in a book and it ties together later on in the book, now you got to go all the way back and reread that so it makes sense in this, right? Um, like many of you guys know when it comes to my books, right? I try to write books that give you game, but also I try to implement ways where it forces people to read. For example, anybody that bought any of my books know that I intentionally do not put page numbers in any of my books to discourage people from skipping around, reading piece and a piece here, a piece there, and then putting the book down because I try to give you so much information. If you just take one small piece, you might go take that piece and make some money. But if you had the whole story, you'll make way more money. But the whole point of the matter is, is that so many people have such a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to reading, because in school you had to read books you didn't like and you had to take a test on it or write a paper on it or take a quiz on it or something like that. So as soon as there's nobody saying you have to read this, then you stop reading. Right. But there are books out there, not just on business. If you don't like business books, uh, that's not the only kind of books that are out there. Anything that you can watch on TV, there's a book version of it. Right. Not saying that. Empire has a book series, but I'm saying if you like drama, they got drama books. If you like comedy, they got comedy books. If you like watching business on YouTube, they got business books, right? So I would encourage everybody, you know, my personal goal is to try to get up to at least a book a month and then scale up from there, but minimum a book a month and then scale up from there. If you're somebody that's brand new to reading, try to read one book a year, right? There's no reason why you can't read one book a year, right? Uh, most books don't even have 12 chapters. If you read a chapter a month and put the book down, you'll read a, a book a year. And the whole idea is to just get yourself back into the habit of reading, especially as an entrepreneur. There is so much information out there in books. You'll learn how to create a business, how to market your business, how to scale your business. All of this information is in books and you don't have to wait for somebody to make a YouTube video, a podcast episode, a course with this information, which they might have that as well, but you can go get the book and now you have that tangible product for forever. You can always reference it over and over again. And there's just so many good things that come from reading. And if you're an entrepreneur, that is a money making skill. If you're able to read something, understand what you read so you can reference back to that information you definitely going to make money. But I do understand, man, how most people are in school. We had to read books we don't care about. So now I'm going to watch TV. I'm going to listen to music. I'm never going to read another book again because I don't have to. I could work a job or if I want to start a business, I'll just figure it out on my own. And again, you're wasting a lot of time and a lot of money. You could read a book and know what you need to do. You still will learn some stuff. It's going to be a learning curve. Not saying that books will make it so you will have a perfect business. You won't make any mistakes, but you will know more than if you just try it on your own, figure everything out, spend all this money, waste all this time when you could have read a book and say, OK, that's how you do that. Let me try that. Right. Next thing I have on this list. Math. So we talked about reading. Now let's talk about math. Math is hard. Right. Especially in college. I think me and Mike did a video on this when we were riding along. Well, it was a part of a video. Right. And he explained since he was on the board of a college and helped them come up with the curriculum that when it comes to college, they try to discourage you in a subtle way. They don't outright say don't get an engineering degree or don't get this degree that has a lot of math. But they will tell you, like, OK, this has a lot of math. Right. If you want to do this, you got to take all of these math and they'll emphasize math instead of an engineer or whatever the degree is. Right. Uh, and, and we have seen this over and over again. In high school, you'll have maybe calculus and then they'll give you an easier math. Maybe it'll be probability and statistics or whatever they call it. But 
there'll always be the hard math and then the easy math, right? And people will call it that. So uh, we get this idea in our head that math is hard. Let me tell you something which many of you already know. In the real world, there's technology that does the math for you. It's good to know how to do the math. So if the technology is ever wrong, you can say, okay, it's wrong, but you still don't have to do it by hand. And lots of times you don't have to do it by calculating, right? So having the, the top level knowledge in the real world of knowing, okay, this is how you're supposed to do it. Okay, that's good enough. But when it comes to accounting, there's accounting software. When you're trying to factor out a problem, uh, whether it be to determine the probability of something, uh, when it comes to money or things like that, you can Google different calculators depending on what it is you're trying to find out and say, okay, if somebody is offering me this investment and they say, I'll give you 7% return on your money in 12 months and you don't know what 7% of whatever amount of money they're asking for is, you can Google that, right? Or if you really want to buy software or download software, it's software that'll do all of that for you. So the whole idea that math is hard discourages people from wanting to do math. And what you will find out in business is that you need to understand math because you need to understand your money. Or if you're doing deals or, um, or you're accepting money from people, if you're getting a loan and they're giving you a percentage rate, you need to be able to calculate that math to say, OK, how much money is it costing me in the long term if I accept this interest rate? Uh, is this actually helping my business? Or hurting my business. If somebody wants to invest in my company and they want this return, is that really a help or is it hurting me? Right. So the whole idea that math is hard is just like reading. Once nobody is forcing you to do math problems every day, you say, I'm never gonna do math. Your bills come in, it just tells you how much to pay. You don't gotta do no math, you just pay the money, move on. But when it comes to business, when you factoring out, is this opportunity worth it? Should I start a courier service in my area? OK, these are the costs. This is what the router's paying. Let me do some quick math. Is this probability uh, worth it to me? If I want to grow my business in 24 months, how do I calculate that? Right. But if you think math is hard, you're going to shy away from having to do this stuff. And what a lot of people do is say that looks like it's a lot of money. I got enough money to buy a van. I'll just buy a van and just do that. And then a year or six months down the line, you'll say, why well, ain't making no money? Right. And it's because you didn't want to do the math because you don't like math. And now you learn it the hard way that just because they said we'll give you two thousand dollars a week. That's not necessarily a good deal. If you're going 600 miles a day and you got to have two drivers in order to fulfill this route. Right. Because now your expenses are so high that your profitability is so low. You're working yourself for little to no money. Right. So math. Math is not hard, you guys. Yes, in school, we had to do it on paper or on the calculator. Or if you had a real dope teacher, like I had in some classes, they'll teach you how to do it in Microsoft Excel. But there are ways that you can get the answer to your math without having to fill up a whole sheet of paper, right? It is good to know the process because if you're going to use software, if the software ever has a malfunction or is wrong, especially if you're using it to keep track of your funds and everything in your business, you want to at least know, okay, something's not right. Let me get this fixed, right? And that's how it really works. Number six on this list that we learned from school, Wikipedia, Google, and YouTube aren't legitimate sources, right? There aren't legitimate sources, right? But Because so they'll say, write this paper, don't use Wikipedia, don't use Google, don't go to YouTube. But as an entrepreneur, when you're trying to start businesses, you will go to Google. Some go to Wikipedia. A lot go to YouTube as well, just like Google, to learn stuff, right? There's a ton of free information. I know because I have over 400 videos of free information, but there's a ton of free information on YouTube that will teach you legit ways to make money. We get testimonies all the time uh, in one of my recent live streams, for those of you that were in that. You saw a gentleman from Chicago is now making six figures based off of the information that he learned uh, on this YouTube channel. Not too long ago on my Instagram, if you're not following JT Hustles on Instagram, follow JT Hustles spelled exactly the way it is on this YouTube channel. I made a post that's still there 
about somebody that's in Canada that took my information and they're making six figures now or two thousand dollars a week, you know, uh, with their own independent career business. So in school, you're told, oh, we got to get scholarly references. It got to come from some outdated source that was written years ago and had and got peer reviews. And that is the only way to justify this information being viable information or legitimate information to use, right? There are a ton of free resources out there. You don't have to go get a scholarly journal to know how to market, how to start a business, things like that. But we're taught if you if all you know is high school and college, and now your mentality is one that ever since you was four or five years old, you've been in this school system and you finished college, let's say at 21, 22, this is what you're programmed to think. So you'll say, okay. I'll give you a quick example. Good friend of mine uh, wanted to invest in business. He wanted to get in on the independent courier service. Um, you know, even though he's like a brother to me, he didn't have enough money for it to make sense. So I said, uh, at that point in my life, I said, let's do a vending business. He said, well, how do we get the contract with Coca-Cola and Pepsi and all of these people so we can get drinks for the vending machine? I said, you don't do that. I said, you go to Costco's, you go to BJ's, you go to Sam's Club. You buy it in bulk, you put it in the vending machine, you upsell it, and that's how it works. He says, oh, that don't sound legit. That sounds shady. Every vending business out here does that. Do you think everybody that owns a vending machine has a contract with Coca-Cola? Do you think Coca-Cola is interested in selling you two cases of Coca-Cola so you could put it in your vending machines, right? But if all you know is, okay, I need to get it from a scholarly source, then you just don't know. Right. And it just is what it is. Moving on. If you fail at something, i.e. a test, a class, a grade, you're not smart. You're not smart. For those of you that don't know my story, I failed three classes in undergrad and still graduated with my bachelor's in two years. I had to take summer school classes and had a huge course load because I was working two jobs, but still made it happen. Failed three classes. I failed out of my first grad school, right? My first major in grad school was finance. I learned a lot of finance, but uh, I'll tell you more about that here in a second. Um, but I failed out of that and I had to go to another grad school and that's when I got my master's degree, right? And now let's backtrack. Reason why I failed out of my first grad school is I think is relatable to a lot of people. I was understanding the knowledge. I wasn't understanding it as fast as the class went, if that made sense. If you ever been in a situation where you kind of got the knowledge, but the class felt or the curriculum felt like it was a little fast paced, right? So that's why I failed out. But the whole point of the matter is that I failed out of grad school, still got a master's. Failed three classes in undergrad, still got a bachelor's, right? I have businesses that fail all the time. I recently tried uh, to launch a shoe. If the shoe did really well, we was going to have a shoe line that failed, right? You fail at stuff as an entrepreneur. It's called taking risks. Every risk doesn't work out. You don't cry about it. You learn from it. You move in. You move on. Maybe if you want to relaunch it, okay, next time I'll do it better this way, right? Or you'll say, maybe this isn't the business for me. I need to focus on something else, right? Because the market that I have is not interested in this product. But failure does not... Failing at something does not make you an overall failure, doesn't make you stupid or anything like that. Appreciate all 36 people that's here. My pause here. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Just going through 10 things that we learned. I'm not trying to put it on you guys. I learned it too, that we learned in school that once you become an entrepreneur, you have this mentality where, okay, this is how things work and the rules are different as an entrepreneur. So that school mentality, and I'm not anti-school, you guys know that uh, I think knowledge is imperative to success, but I think that the traditional school system in lots of ways are failing people, right? That's why we started Hustle Academy. That's why we're doing the live events with Appliance Bootcamp to hopefully give people an alternative that's cost-effective to get practical knowledge, right? But appreciate y'all being here. Comment where you're watching this from. Any questions or comments you have, put in the chat. You guys know we'll get to it at the end. Next thing I want to talk to you about is fractional history is more important than taxes. Now, no teacher will tell you 
that fractional history is more important than taxes. What I mean is that you'll take all of these history classes, especially uh, pre-college, right, in your elementary years, you'll take all of these history classes and no, there's no class on taxes. There's a lots of people that you'll go all the way through college and depending on what curriculum you're in, they still won't teach you about uh, taxes, right? So you'll learn fractional history. What I mean by fractional history is that if you lucky, they'll spend a week on black history. They'll spend six months on talking about colonizing the United States, right? So you're not even getting all the history, right? So you're getting fractional history and no information about taxes. And then once you get out in the real world, you'll find out, okay, it's cool to know history, but what I'm going to do about these taxes, right? Especially if I'm an entrepreneur, um, I got to pay taxes on this whole hundred grand. Um, there ain't no deductions I can take. There's nothing that I can do to kind of like minimize uh, the amount of money that I got to pay out, right? So they'll teach you without explicitly saying it, fractional history over taxes and stuff that you're going to really need. Not saying that it's bad, but if you're going to teach history, teach the whole history, right? Teach us the history about the Native Americans from their perspective, then teach it about the colonization, then teach us about, you know, every person that's here, right? Give us the entire history if you're going to give us history. Don't just give us a fractional history, right? And not teach us anything about taxes. Next thing, in school, something else that, depending on where you go, it may be explicitly said, but it's definitely understood everywhere, is that get a corporate job instead of becoming an entrepreneur, right? And they might word it different ways, but they'll say, hey, go to college, you can become a lawyer, a doctor, a school teacher, you know, whatever it is that your parents or your uh, teachers tell you. Very seldom, I think I've almost never heard anybody say, go become an electrician, a general contractor, a plumber, an independent courier, an appliance repair person, uh, a cell phone repair person, Things like this, right? Talk about entrepreneurship, open up a daycare center. These are all businesses that these individuals are making more than the college graduates. They definitely making more than the traditional school teachers, but they're making more money than a lot of people with these traditional degrees. Yet you're told get a corporate job. That's the pinnacle of success for most people. You want to get a corner office, $100,000 a year job. Whereas as a business in four to five years, if you do business the right way, your business should be automated and you're still making the same amount of money. Corporate America, you got all these degrees and then you might have been working for a company eight to 10 years or more just to build yourself up to that promotion. Right. So definitely moving on, moving on. Uh, the 10th and final thing, and then I'll get to you guys' questions, comments and uh, feel free to disagree. Uh, you know, it's all about just having a dialogue. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to bash anybody that's pro school. Again, I'm not anti-school. Um, but last thing I have is that school, particularly in college, unless you went to private school, uh, I think some people in private school may have a different approach. But in the traditional public school system uh, and in some colleges, you're given a cookie cutter business advice. Uh, I have my MPA, Master's in Public Administration. My friends have MBA, Business Administration. I know more about business than they do, right? Because they got an MBA and now they're working corporate America jobs. And I'm actually doing businesses, entrepreneurship, establishing multiple streams of income for myself, right? And they have cookie cutter knowledge. I'll say, hey, think about doing a fish breeding business, man. I like fish. There's money in it. I can figure it out. And, you know, I, I'll be successful with it. They'll be like, what's your business plan? I don't need a business plan to breed fish. They're like, what's your SWOT analysis? I don't need a SWOT analysis to breed fish. Or they'll give you, or the traditional school system will give you a outdated research tactics or marketing or sales strategies. Again, they're using resources that are peer reviewed, scholarly, but they're tremendously outdated, right? Email marketing is not dead, but email marketing is not as good as social media marketing as of this upload, right? So it still works. It's just not as effective, right? Door-to-door -door sales, there are people still making sales like that. It's still not as effective as email marketing, which is not as effective as social media marketing. And the market is always changing, right? There may be, become a time where email marketing is the only way to market. That's the best thing since sliced bread again, right? But 
in your MBA classes, they're teaching you outdated business stuff, or basically they're teaching you more so how to work in corporate America, right? So how to fit into somebody else's business, right? And, and those of you that have an MBA, you can comment your thoughts on it. But I have several friends that got MBAs. What you learn with an MBA is not how to start your own business. It's how to work for somebody else's business, right? So that's it in a nutshell. How to fit into their corporate America structure and how to analyze reports and look at profit and loss statements and do SWOT analysis and write reports and things like that and business plans so you can go ask for loans uh, from banks and things like that. So they teach you more so how to go in corporate America and work for somebody else's business and be an impact to them and not so much on how to start your own business, right? And I took a few business classes uh, on the grad level and I wasn't really interested in it because right out the gate, you know, um, before I even went to college, I was flipping cars off of Craigslist, making seven, seven grand here, 10 grand here, like that's back when, depending on where you are, it might still be like this. Everybody wanted an old school with, with candy paint. So we'll go get an old school off of Craigslist. Manko had a special where they wouldn't pop no dents, get no scratches out, but they'll give you a coat of paint for like $250. So we going to find old schools. We cleaning them up ourselves, me and my buddy uh, in the Marine Corps. We take it to Manko, drop $250 on it, uh, $250. That's it. Get it painted, relist it. Seven bands, eight bands, ten bands, right? So having that mentality, and even before that, uh, in the military, those of you that have a military background, every so often you got to go to the rifle range and qualify on your rifle. They have a pit, and then they have a firing line. I was a pit NCO. My secondary MOS was uh, to be a marksmanship instructor, and I'm just talking to those military people out there. I know anybody that wasn't in the military don't care or don't know what I'm talking about. So I was a marksmanship coach and I was a pit NCO. So I taught people how to shoot. But most of the time I was the guy in the pit yelling out targets, fixing targets, things of that nature. I bought a hot plate. I went to the commissary. I bought hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, stuff like that. Because once you're in the pit and they firing, you can't go get a snack and there's no vending machine. So I was making three to five hundred dollars a day. As a pit NCO in the pit with a hot plate, we had a little mini fridge. We had a hot plate. I'll get a working party to make some targets, get a pretty girl. She making hot dogs and hamburgers. We making three to five hundred dollars a day. Right. And that's just how it is. That's just how it was, man, as the pit NCO. And, uh, and shoot. And then every so often they'll switch. We'll make another, you know, what I mean, so much money. But anyway, all of that to say is that by the time. I took a business class. I already was doing little side hustles, illegitimate as they were. I'll be honest. I ain't have no business license when I was cooking in the pits. And I ain't had no business license or no uh, license when I was flipping cars off of Craigslist. But from coming from a background of I didn't take any business classes, but I already made, you know, good money doing business. How you going to tell me to do it this way when I know for a fact I'm not like a traditional student that came from high school to here and they never did nothing. So they believe it's true. I'm like, man, you can make three to five hundred dollars a day making hot dogs and hamburgers on a hot plate. because that's what we did in the pitch. Right. So that is. But the whole point of the matter is that in the traditional school system, lots of times you're getting either outdated business information or they're teaching you how to go work a corporate America job. They're not teaching you how to start your own business. They're teaching you about balance sheets, profit and loss statements, how to do uh, analysis, how to factor in uh, the time value of money if you're a finance major in grad school like I was for a brief moment of time. So, But not how to actually go out, get it out the mud, start a business from the bottom up, scale it up, and make it into a legitimate business. Appreciate all 44 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. We're about to get into the chat. I'm going to recap all 10 real quickly. And then we're going to get straight into it for the benefit of those that just checked in. So 10 things that we learned in school that make us unsuccessful when we become entrepreneurs or make us struggle as entrepreneurs. I struggle with it. Maybe you will struggle with it or have struggled with it as well. You're afraid to make mistakes. Keep your eyes on your paper, meaning that you're afraid to, to learn from your competitors or look elsewhere for the answers. 
A diploma, a degree, or a certification is needed in order to make big money. Reading is bad because reading is boring, cumbersome, or work. Math is hard. Google, YouTube, or Wikipedia aren't legitimate sources. If you fail at something, then you're stupid, you're dumb, you're not smart. Uh, we're also taught fractional history is more important than taxes, right? There's a lot more things more important than fractional history, but taxes is the biggest thing that I wish uh, people would learn. And uh, maybe me and Mike will even do a course on taxes at some point in time for Hustle Academy. I'll talk to him about that. But I think that's definitely needed. Um, from the perspective of as an entrepreneur, what tax deductions are out there for you. It's good. Definitely get a good accountant. But I do think, like always, you still need to have a general knowledge of that information yourself, even if you don't actually do your taxes yourself. I don't recommend that you do your taxes yourself as a business if you're scaling up. Uh, and then number nine, get a corporate job instead of becoming an entrepreneur, whereas most corporations or most businesses were started by an entrepreneur. Matter of fact, unless you're working for a government entity or a state entity, whatever you want to call it, it's probably was started years ago by an entrepreneur and they created the corporation and grew it up. So the job that you're going for probably a hundred years ago or less was started by an entrepreneur. Yet they tell you to go be the worker instead of the creator. Uh, and number 10, you're going to get cookie cutter business advice, meaning general stuff that, okay, it's cool to know a SWOT analysis is cool to know how to write a business plan. It's cool uh, to know, you know, um, the history of marketing and things like that. But it's always changing. It's always changing. Was a time you could just email somebody. Now social media, um, YouTube is effective, right? Um, I love text messaging marketing. Um, you guys will see more of that here in a second. But that's it, you guys. Now let's get to this chat really quickly. Uh, what's up, fam? Watching from Detroit. Appreciate you being here. Shout out to Detroit. What's good, fam? What's up, BK from the Rockies? Donnie Henson, Philly, Philly, rise and grind. Appreciate you being here. Philly in the house. Maryland in the house. Divine principles and laws. Good morning. Savannah watching. I, I should be working. Hey, this is work. Appreciate you being here, Miss Curly Girl Murray. Uh, Reading, Pennsylvania in the house. Shout out to Ricardo uh, Rivera. K. Bish from Miami. Columbia, South Carolina is here. Good morning at Banks Billionaire from Kanye's, Georgia. Shout out to Andrew Wells from Memphis 10 checking in. Do it. Uh, you are so right about reading. Absolutely. That's why I was saying I might even do a, a, a YouTube video on it because I feel like people think it's boring. And if you read something that you're not interested in, it is boring. Right. Um, but there are books out there that meet whatever your desire is. Like if you want to be entertained. If you like romance, if you like drama, but start with those, right? But if you're going to be an entrepreneur at some point in time, you got to get into reading. I, I recommend books because there's a lot of information out there, but also contracts too, right? Uh, let's use independent couriers because a lot of you guys might have originally subscribed to me because y'all like that. Um, the independent courier contract would be this thick. They'll flip to the back and say, just sign here, initial here, and you know, put some put your uh, insurance company here and this is how much money we'll give you. And uh, if you do it, they'll close it. You don't got to read it, but it's stuff in that contract that I recommend that you read. Right. Um, agreed about schools, pushing degrees and certs. I think that's a big reason why the current generation has so much debt before they start making money. Absolutely. Excellent point regarding reading. Definitely. Definitely. And I suggest if you're somebody out there, be honest with yourself if you say, I hate reading, I just don't like to read, try to read one book a year and don't make it a business book. Even if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you like to laugh, find a book that looks funny to you and read the book, you know, and give yourself a whole year to read the book and next year do the same. And then once you get into the habit of, OK, I can sit down for an hour and read without stopping or, I, you know, I'm flowing with it, then you can gently or gradually Build yourself up in the reading. But reading is a money-making skill, right? I think school give it a bad rap. I made so much money off of the stuff that I read, right? Uh, I buy books and only read the parts that pertain to me. I go out and execute. Once completed, I go and read other parts that pertain. Yeah, a lot of people do that. And I'd rather you do that than not read at all, right? So definitely, if that's what you got to do, 
Hey, that's what you got to do to get started. I'm going to stick to audio books, my bro, but I definitely take notes while I listen. Absolutely. And yeah, yeah, you, uh, if audio books work for you, yeah, reading a traditional book is more engaging, but if audio books work, there's nothing wrong with audio books. Some people don't like this book, uh, and people like ebooks. If you like ebooks, audio books, just books, right? Books. Uh, the traditional way forces you to be more engaged and to retain knowledge, but Everybody is so busy right now. There's nothing wrong with audio books. There's nothing wrong with ebooks. Uh, hey, JT, watching from NYC. Appreciate you being here, Mark Joseph. Ooh, I wish I had that much time. My three year old keeps me busy when I'm not at work, but I do read to him as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And just like uh, what's suggested, uh, if, if audio books work better, you know, it's better than not reading at all, right? I, it's, it's much better to listen to an audio book and hear the information and take notes like was suggested, then just not consume the information at all, right? Uh, books are the key, YouTube videos help, absolutely. Me and Mike get people all the time saying that, you know, uh, we making six figures from watching y'all videos, either doing independent courier stuff or whatever other business they saw on my channel, on his channel. Things like that as well. Also, I'm going to pause here. Shout out to Mike Sneed, one of my mentors. He did a video today on flipping appliances. Don't go leave here now. But after this, go to Save, Invest, Repeat on YouTube. And uh, he's going to start showing y'all how to fix uh, flip appliances. He actually flipped my washer and dryer for me. Uh, that This used to be the laundry room. And uh, shoot, he, he sold it so fast, man. I ain't even listed on Craigslist. Right? So he definitely good at flipping appliances, fixing appliances, things like that. Um, how do I buy your book? If you go to Amazon.com, type in JT Hustles. This is my latest book. I also have an announcement about the meet and greet. Since there's 41 people here, uh, once we go through the chat at the end, I'm going to talk to you guys about the meet and greet if you got time. If not, you can fast forward to the end when you come back. But um, go to Amazon, type in JT Hustles. This is my book that's designed to help felons or it can help anybody create legitimate six-figure businesses, but it is written towards felons for every paperback that is sold i sent a free copy to somebody incarcerated dm me on instagram your proof of purchase and their mailing information and i send it out right that's all you have to do you don't have to pay anything extra if you buy the book because you want the book and you uh know somebody that's incarcerated that you think would also like the book just send me that you bought a book they get a book for absolutely free that's how it works uh for those of you that don't know um, read your, read books to your child, two birds, one stone. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. My daughter gets read to every night. Like her mother is great about it. Uh, she reads to her every night. Um, at Mike Leonard, JT books are for sale through Amazon. I just put one in the mail. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know I just got one in the mail. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate your support. BK from the Rockies. If it's the most recent book, again, if you know anybody incarcerated, it don't matter where they are. Uh, just get me their mailing address and who to mail it to, and I put it in the mail. I, I've been sending it out uh, same day, um, but we're running low. So even if I run out here soon, because I got to check my DMs after this, they'll get it. You know, uh, I'll send it out ASAP, uh, definitely the same week. Uh, but I got more books on the way, and uh, my own hand quantity is running a little low. Good idea, but there are no pictures. I think it'll be boring to him. I will try it, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with picture books, you guys. I'm going to do a, a a book with pictures in it at some point in time, right? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with picture books, especially if you're somebody that that um doesn't really enjoy reading. Um, and I know the comment that was made was in reference to children, but I'm talking about even if you're an adult and you don't like books like this, like uh, it ain't nothing but word at the word, you know, and that's not interesting to you because. You know, it reminds you of being in school again. Start with a book with pictures, right? It, it's no shame. It's no shame, man, in reading a, a children's book, a book with pictures, as long as you read it, right? I just want people to get into the habit of knowing that you can literally read a book and take what you read and make money with it, right? I've done it. People have done it from reading my books. People have done it for reading a whole multitude of books, right? But um, I think people just don't know. Don't know. Or you can just go to, um, what is it, Barnes and Nobles. You'll see people in there all the time. They'll just get a book off the shelf, read it while they're in there, or read what they want to read, put it back on the shelf and eat. Right? Uh, in all my years, math has always been the great divide. 
Too many people start off by saying it's hard and then run away from it without even trying. Absolutely. In entrepreneurship, there is software that does the math for you, the accounting. I mean, you can get a good accountant, which I do recommend that. Uh, but there's software out there that does the math for you. If you want to get a loan and maybe you really need $25,000, but if they tell you 35% interest, if you don't know how to calculate 25% interest or 35% interest, whatever, on $25,000, then that's something you need to know before you sign on the dotted line and just take that money, right? Um, so there's software that's out there. It's very easy to do with a calculator. You don't have to do it by hand. It's not cheating. It's not unethical to use a calculator uh, either on your phone or Google a calculator that does that math for you, right? And um, fairly easy, fairly easy to do. Um, shout out Los Angeles in the house. Nicole Noel, being here, like, share, and or subscribe if you're enjoying this discussion. Appreciate that, BK from the Rockies. Please do that if you don't mind, if you do not mind. Uh, what's up, JT? Checking in from Charlotte, North Carolina. Shout out the Out the Ordinary Custom T-shirts, uh, Ricardo Rivera. Uh, checking in from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Appreciate you being here, Mike Leonard. Um, we'll see where we left off at. Uh, Denver, thanks for the info. Peace, y'all. Uh, some private schools. <laughs> yep, yep. It's true about all kinds of schools. Uh, check Black Trail out and get back with me if you're interested in investing or promoting. Uh, I'll talk to you more about it if interested. All right. Uh, I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was until after I worked for a world-renowned university. Yep. Very useful topic. You're going great. Uh, love your channel. Thought about starting a courier business about three years. Uh, show, but didn't know where to start. Came across your channel, and that fire has been re reignited. Absolutely, you guys. Absolutely. Um, I love the independent courier industry. If it wasn't for uh, becoming an independent courier, I wouldn't uh, be to where I am now, where I have multiple streams of income and doing different things with it now. So I'm personally thankful for it. It was my bridge over into entrepreneurship. Um, USMC in the house. Absolutely. Uh, good morning, Hustle Family. Shout out Brandy YouTube channel. Uh, World Star Knowledge is here. Uh, World Star Knowledge from Born El a lot. Appreciate that World Star Knowledge comment. Listening to Green with you. I'm at work in a school. My business is Herbal Products. So shout out Divine Principles and Laws. A lot of people that subscribe to this channel got their own business, you guys. So you might find somebody in the chat or in the description below that's in a business with you. Me and Mike were talking about doing this. Uh, definitely. For the people that come to the meet and greet and the people that come to the live events of just trying to make a network of people that um, if you're in the same industry, you guys help each other out. Right. And we're not going to try to make you guys compete against each other. So we wouldn't put uh, ideally, at least we wouldn't try to put two people who are in the same market, in the same neighborhood together. But we'll put, you know, different people in and you guys can feed off each other and definitely grow. Uh, where are the likes? Yep. Yeah. Please smash that like button, you guys, if you don't mind. See 36 people that's still here. Do you buy courses to get more knowledge to do business? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Um, I haven't bought a course in a while. Um, I bought uh, an, a real estate investors course. Right. And um, that's the last course that I bought. And uh, it was like a course online and it had a live component to it. And while I learned a lot, I really felt scammed at the end of the day because once I went out and actually started doing what it said and got to the point where I was trying to flip it and make money, they kind of left you high and dry. So um, that turned me off from it. But every course is not like that. And what I would recommend to you guys, which I didn't know because I was brand new, is do your due diligence on the person, do your due diligence on the course, whatever it is, if there's not a person tied to it. And then if you don't feel that they're credible or if you feel like there's unanswered questions, uh, address that before you invest in the course. So say, uh, say for instance, if I was to do it again now, I would say, OK, I see your curriculum. Um, will you guys help me find somebody to sell it to? Right. And then at that point in time, if they would have said yes. Then I could have held them to it. If they would have said no, then I would have said, OK, I'm not interested in this particular course. If you're telling me how to find deals, how to contract it. But then once I have it under contract, I'm pretty much, you know, left high and dry. 
But again, I was young, didn't know anything about real estate. And, uh, you know, I should have known to ask that, but I just assumed that that was a part of it without explicitly asking for it. Um, shout out to Ohio, Dallas, Texas. Uh, what is this channel about? This channel is about multiple streams of income. 704, Charlotte, North Carolina. Appreciate you being here. Quit my job and started my own business after listening to you and my homeboy. Oh, I wish you much, 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 much success. Charles, uh, he's contracted with Blue Streak, and I'm with Curry Express. Lasership is a scam company. Um, yeah, Lasership usually give you about a dollar a package. Uh, I'm not saying they're a scam. You know, I, I haven't had any bad experience on them. But, you know, uh, I do value the, the insight of other people that's here. So you guys do your own due diligence. Appreciate your insight on that. And uh, uh, what's the best way to turn $50 into $100 a board? Yeah, we got we got plenty of videos on this channel that's, that's telling you how to create a six-figure business with stuff like that. Uh, at eight, well, eight. Uh, like, share, and or subscribe if you're enjoying the discussion. Um, how much are the books? One is uh, this one is twenty nine ninety nine. The other one is twenty five. They're available on Amazon. You search JT Hustles. Hi, uh, Xavier Banks. No cheap shots. Uh, North Carolina. Um, let me see. Uh, well, yeah, I had six questions. Got zero answers. Well, hey, you probably showed up late. And didn't know that that was the, the process. But anyway, you guys. So uh, real quick announcements. Um, again, not anti-school. Let's talk about the whole, um, the event sold out, right? Appliance Boot Camp, the third one sold out two hours after the YouTube video was made. Me and Mike are uh, thinking about maybe letting a couple of extra people into the third one because it sold out so fast and so many people still want it uh, to get in it. If you are interested in it, what you need to do is DM uh, me on Instagram or you can email Mike um, at saveinvestrepeat at gmail.com. Uh, Mike is the one that's actually doing the scheduling and things like that. Um, so you can email Mike directly or you can DM me on Instagram at uh, JT Hustle spelled exactly like the channel name is on YouTube and let us know um, and if there's enough interest and if we can work out the spacing. Because the big thing is, is that, you know, we want to give it to everybody. But we don't want to have 50 people there and only 10 people get hands on training and the other 40 people are feeling like I got the knowledge, but I didn't physically touch anything and take it apart and put it back together. So we want to keep it so everybody that's there. Yeah, you get the knowledge of how to diagnose a problem, how to fix a problem. But if you come to the live event, we want to make sure everybody can actually touch something and say, I know not only the idea of what's wrong with it and how to fix it, but I physically touched that and, and have taken it apart, put it back together, fixed it, whatever the case may be, right? So uh, Mike's really big on that, and I agree with that. We want you guys, because you get the just the verbal information on YouTube. So uh, we don't want to give you just verbal information at the live event. We want you to come, meet us, get the information, actually touch something, actually fix something, with your own hands so you know okay it's not that hard i can do this so once i go back home i'm confident when somebody calls me and says there's such and such is doing such and such i can go fix that that's not a big deal so that's why we're limiting the class size um so uh we might try to make the class a little bigger but again you can reach out to either him or me um and decide and then uh if, if we feel like we can bring in a couple more people and still give everybody hands-on time, uh, then we definitely will do so. Before you send that email to Mike or DM me, be ready to buy now. Um, again, uh, if you're not ready to buy immediately, just wait till the live course comes out in Hustle Academy or whenever we uh, do the fourth one, which honestly we have no idea when the fourth one will be. But if you're not ready to buy now, it's fine. But um, I'm just telling you, if you DM me or if you email Mike and it is available, you're going to have to be ready to buy immediately because they're all there, there is a waiting list already, right? Um, or I don't know if it's a formal waiting list or we knew it was a group of people who still wanted to get in. So I'm calling it a waiting list. I don't know how Mike has it structured or not. Um, last thing, the meet and greet. We still are going to find an exact date and an exact location. But me and Mike are talking about what you guys will get from the meet and greet. And you'll hear this uh, several times over. But I, I just want to go ahead and throw it out to you guys now 
so that uh, you can give us feedback on what you think about this stuff so far. So the meet and greet, of course, come out, meet me, meet Mike. Uh, we're going to do book signings. Mike is writing uh, his, his book about being a one man or one woman, appliance repair business, how to make six figures as a single individual with your own appliance repair business. So he's writing a book on it as well. He's going to bring his book. I'm going to bring my latest book, The Key to Winning is Given. Uh, so we're going to do book signings. We're going to bring limited books, though, because uh, we don't know how many people will show up. Um, so definitely, uh, if you want to just get your book signed, you can bring the book you already have. You can go to Amazon to bring a book. Or if you wanted the first people there, then we'll definitely have enough books. But I just want to put that out there initially that, well, we're going to be doing meet and greet. We're going to do the book signing. But um, then beyond that, I'm going to give everybody that's there an expediter list of 10 companies. If you want to start doing expediting work, uh, we're going to do uh, the people that come to the live event or the meet and greet. We're going to put you guys in a private group so we can continue to network with you guys. Um, and it's going to be a private six figure business class. Like you guys know on this channel, we were talking about uh, how to take like 40 or 50 dollars and make a six figure business with the appliance repair. I mean, not with the appliance repair, excuse me, the cell phone repair. But uh, we did the cell phone repair business on this channel. We did the dryer vent cleaning. We did the mobile pet grooming. So all of that kind of stuff. We're going to do exclusive ones that only go down at the meet and greets there as well. Right. And that's just some of the stuff that we're talking about doing. Um, it's really going to depend on how many people want to come out and everything like that. We haven't worked out all the logistics. But let me let me know how you guys feel about that. So, again, meet and greet, book signing. Um, expediter list if you want to start expediting. Uh, and, and I'm saying expediting instead of independent courier because independent courier companies, sometimes they may be regional, uh, but an expediter list, you're going all over. So it doesn't matter where you are. So that's why I'm bringing expediter, uh, expediting list uh, that I'm going to give it to everybody and not an independent courier list because we're going, we're starting in Atlanta, but then we're going different places. So uh, you'll get the expediting list, uh, meet and greet, book signing private six-figure business uh, class, and we'll put you in the private group. You'll be in there with just other people from the meet and greet uh, and other people that came to the live appliance repair boot camp. Reason for that is because uh, just like at our live events, um, people network, you might find out that you're in the same area wanting to do some of the exact same things. And uh, you have a spot where you know everybody that's in this group is on the same type of time. So you guys can feed off of one another and work on doing whatever it is you're trying to do, market together um, or whatever. You know what I mean? Just give you guys a place where uh, me and Michael be in there, but it's also really going to be for you guys to network. Um, let me see. We got anything else before I get out of here. Shout out Dallas, Texas. I'm coming to North Carolina, uh, looking into opportunity zones this summer. <clears throat> cool, cool. Uh, checking in from Georgia, currently Korea. Need to catch up on your videos. Did you not make a video on how to find contracts? Absolutely. That video has over 100,000 views. So, yeah, the video on how to start the business and get contracts, it's been out for a while, has over 100,000 views. If you're subscribed to this channel, uh, the video is on the home screen of this YouTube channel. Like, uh, I'm going to assume that everybody doesn't know how YouTube works. If you're not subscribed, what you see on the home uh, screen of, of a YouTuber's uh, channel is different than if you are subscribed, right? So uh, the YouTuber has the option to make it the same, but uh, some YouTubers is different. So mine is different. If you're not subscribed, you see one video. If you are subscribed, that's the first video that pops up on the home screen of the JTL's YouTube channel. So yeah, so that video is out, has over 100,000 views. People are out making money off of it. Um, and I, am I the only one who liked this video? Hey, smash that like button, you guys. It does help the channel. Uh, I'm the, I am determined to make six figures with my tax service, bookkeeping, and credit repair. Absolutely possible. It's absolutely possible. Uh, Davida Jane Brown situations has turned me into a beast. Absolutely. Absolutely, you guys. So definitely hope you guys learn something from this. If you're watching this after the fact, you know you can put down in the comment section how you feel about this. If you agree, disagree, you know, just keep it respectful. That's the only thing. Uh, keep it respectful or, you know, uh, your, your comment will get deleted because it's not that kind of channel. It's all about networking, trying to motivate, inspire people, uh, and educate them to do something entrepreneurial, not necessarily quit your job, but 
uh, just make a little extra money in an aspect of your life. But until next time, so I'm a hustler, stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm going.